In this video, I'm going to be exploring how PTSD during perimenopause or menopause can actually exacerbate everything. And I recently had a client who was experiencing a very traumatic time in her life. In fact, she was diagnosed as having complex post-traumatic stress disorder and her, all of her symptoms were completely exacerbated by the hormonal fluctuations that she was experiencing during perimenopause. So she went to a psychiatrist and they immediately put her on a very strong SSRI antidepressant. And then because she was displaying some very kind of psychological, you know, psychological symptoms that showed acute dis dysregulation, she was also prescribed a benzodiazepine. And the psychiatrist just left her to it for a year. It makes me so angry because that psychiatrist didn't factor in her age, her perimenopausal symptoms, and just basically was managing his own risk in the process. And if you're on benzos for more than like six months, you know, depending on your dosage, it can actually cause major cognitive impairment. And she became severely dependent. It took her almost six months to safely taper and withdraw from the drug. And the withdrawal symptoms were very much like having alcohol withdrawal. And she almost died through the whole process. So, I want to talk about educating yourself on the dangers of some of the treatments that are out there. When it comes to hormonal fluctuations and you're experiencing a traumatic event, be very careful to just allow practitioners to just prescribe lots of drugs. Yes, of course, we want an easy fix to things, but sometimes things are a little bit more complicated. And I want to talk a bit about the different hormonal things that go on during perimenopause in particular, because that's such a huge fluctuating time and how they can exacerbate any kind of trauma that you're going through. So perimenopause is the transitional phase leading up to menopause and a woman's body goes through significant hormonal changes. So by the time you actually reach menopause, most people it's around about the age of 52, you've already experienced perimenopause for 10 to 15 years prior to that. So by the time your FSH test test positive, you might have already had 15 years prior to then of all this fluctuation time called perimenopause. So while perimenopause itself doesn't directly cause post-traumatic stress disorder, it does definitely worsen the symptoms or experiences of someone who already has PTSD. So the way that it does that is, is if you're going through perimenopause, there's significant fluctuations in your hormone levels, particularly the sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So perimenopause, your progesterone just drops through the floor and your estrogen will just like yo-yo all over the place. And estrogen is good at helping us control and modulate stress. It helps us think straight. And those changes can really affect mood regulation and exacerbate the symptoms of anxiety, depression, emotional distress. So for someone with PTSD or someone going through a divorce, a bereavement or a loss, a loss of a child or they've lost you know their job or their business or whatever these mood disturbances that are resulted from the hormonal fluctuation can just intensify the whole emotional response to the traumatic trigger and the memory the sleep disturbances so perimenopausal symptoms often include sleep disturbances such as insomnia or night sweats and sleep problems are very common amongst people with ptsd and the combination of perimenopausal sleep issues and the ex existing like PTSD related sleep disturbance. I mean, this is just a nightmare. This can lead to severe sleep disruption. It impacts emotional well-being, exacerbates all the PTSD symptoms. Again, you go to a practitioner and they'll be like, right, we need to put you on all the drugs. It's not necessarily addressing the root cause of any of this. Hot flashes and physical symptoms, of course, are other symptoms of perimenopause, and that can also increase the overall stress levels. And individuals with PTSD may find it really challenging to cope with those additional stressors, making it even more difficult to manage their PTSD symptoms. Cognitive changes. You know, so some women experience cognitive changes such as brain fog, memory lapses, difficulty concentrating. That's quite common actually with perimenopause. But if you add PTSD alongside that, those cognitive changes can be really harder to process and manage the traumatic memories, maintain focus during therapy or treatment. And that can drive up the stress hormone cortisol 
that then suppresses the workings of the hippocampus, which is crucial for making memories and actually processing memories. So that stage of life that I find with clients, I mean, I'm, I'm always, when I'm working with people, their age is so crucial. Knowing where they're at from a holistic perspective is really crucial because it influences the treatment protocol completely. Also, if you're on, you know, you're going through perimenopause and you're on HRT, the hormone replacement therapy, um, you know, they consider that replacement therapy to manage their symptoms. But the use of HRT can sometimes have complex effects on mood and emotion. And it's essential for individuals with PTSD to also discuss the risks and benefits of HRT with their healthcare provider because sometimes there's a crossover the two. You know, so if for example you're you're taking a lot of estrogen or you're not taking any progesterone, I mean progesterone is your kind of happy hormone, they would say, and like that can then exacerbate what's happening with your treatment on the PTSD side. So the key thing is that your age, your status, and you know, in regards to perimenopause or full menopause is really crucial. And most general practitioners and doctors are not trained to recognize the signs. So they prescribe all kinds of drugs like antidepressants or benzodiazepines, which don't fix the issue and can leave you with long-term consequences. So sometimes, the bottom line is sometimes your symptoms are worsened by hormonal fluctuation. And the crucial thing to do is to educate yourself on what the signs are and to start to take steps to balance your hormones. Balancing your hormones is crucial to fixing your PTSD. Now the one hormone that you should really focus on in particular is progesterone. Remember during menopause your progesterone drops, your estrogen flies all over the place. And progesterone is a key hormone because progesterone, estrogen, they're all made, you know, they're all made in the same kind of location. And progesterone not only helps the cardiovascular system stay healthy, it helps cholesterol in good health at good levels. It also lowers total serum cholesterol, increases your high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol, lowers the triglyceride level. And anxiety can often happen with a lack of progesterone. And it's kind of, you know, the brain and the blood brain barrier health are all protected and helped by progesterone. And irritability can happen when your progesterone is abnormally low. So progesterone is actually made from your cholesterol and cholesterol is changed through various enzymes, including pregnenolone into progesterone hormone. And it then makes a lot of, it makes the estrogen and it makes the testosterone that was, that's within your body. So controlling this hormone is actually pretty crucial. So how do you control your progesterone levels? What do you do? First things first, you've actually really got to watch your nutrition. So people that go through any of our trauma recovery programs, we're all like in the, in the holistic space and looking at your nutrition. And particularly during perimenopause, it helps to take a hair test. So the hair test that you can order on the internet that studies your food intolerances, your allergies to particular metals or um, substances in your environment. If you get the report back and it says to minimize certain things, I would really pay attention to that. Because in the normal course of events, you probably tolerated those foods and substances fine. But the minute your progesterone levels dropped and your estrogen levels are up and down, maybe your intolerance is now leading to an allergy. So you're going to be more sensitive during this stage of your life so paying attention to those intolerances and making adjustments like dropping gluten or, or whatever the food is, like in my case it was coconut, who knew? Um, so it's finding out what those intolerances are and dropping them out of your life so that you are then in a better position to actually process your PTSD. Next thing is to take magnesium and vitamin D. Magnesium is needed to create nearly all hormones and natural sources of vitamin D is really disgusting. And there's very few of us that want to eat the amount of sardines and, and stuff that is actually required to make vitamin D. And getting into the sunlight for 30 minutes at midday, it's just not possible and it's probably going to give us sunburn. So taking those as supplements, I'm not a fan of lots of supplements, but I think those two in particular is really, really good for us. Next thing is it might be time for us to really eliminate alcohol. It's the single most effective change you can make to reduce your symptoms in perimenopause. And if you're dealing with PTSD at the same time, vital to cut the alcohol during your recovery. 
During perimenopause, the functioning of the liver, which breaks down alcohol and produces and metabolizes women's hormones, is just going to be less efficient due to what we're going through. So cutting alcohol is going to make a massive difference. There are some natural creams with progesterone that are identical to what your body makes that you can use to support the low progesterone phase of your hormone. So premenstrual headaches, insomnia, poor sleep, they're often relieved by magnesium and then these natural progesterone creams. So that includes the elimination of bladder problems, vaginal dryness, hot flushes, even though in the main they are contributed by the lack of estrogen when occurring through perimenopause, they can be helped by the use of natural progesterone creams. So hair loss occurring postmenopause also can be helped with a natural progesterone cream. So by the way, I, I don't, I'm not being paid to endorse any kind of progesterone cream, but I'm a fan based on the practice that we've actually seen within our clinic. So because progesterone balances the effects of ex excess estrogen, it can also help to prevent breast cancer, uterine cancer, and help inhibit the growth of prostate cancer. So getting yourself one of the wild yam creams or other progesterone balancing creams is probably a good idea. And just do some research and find one that's in your area that you are kind of, you know, you can experiment with and see how that works for you. Also being aware of other hormones and neurotransmitters during your PTSD. You know, they also at play. You know, when our bodies are stressed and we release cortisol to help us respond effectively by regulating our blood pressure and response to inflammation, the chronic stress levels can lead to hugely elevated levels of cortisol. That can have hugely negative effects on your body, including increased anxiety, weight gain, and disruptions in sleep patterns. Getting your cortisol level down is going to be crucial. How you do that? Focus again on your nutrition, focus on your alcohol, reduce your sugar, Get some uh, you know, sunlight early in the morning because that sorts out your circadian rhythm and rest and relax at, at stages during the day to kind of bring your cortisol levels down. Walking also reduces cortisol levels. Next is adrenaline. Adrenaline or epinephrine is released in response to acute stresses. It's called the, the fight or flight response within the brain. It increases your heart rate, your blood pressure and energy levels to prepare for the quick response. But again, prolonged exposure to stress, exacerbating symptoms from perimenopause, your PTSD, this can just lead to excessive production and that contributes to more anxiety and cardiovascular problems. So getting that under control is about rest and relax, focusing on nutrition, focusing on you know, all the things that I've said here, getting some good exercise during the day, not too much, just healthy kind of levels of exercise that you know under 30 minutes or so per day. Stress, PTSD, perimenopause can also affect the insulin sensitivity. Okay, so that can then make it more challenging for your body to regulate glucose, potentially worsening conditions like diabetes or causing mood swings, fatigue. And, you know, getting your sugar levels under control and cutting sugar while you're recovering, it's probably a good idea. Chronic stress, PTSD, perimenopause can also disrupt the normal function of the thyroid gland. So that also affects the production of thyroid hormones, which can also lead to mood disturbances, fatigue and weight changes. Again, addressed by the same things that we've said, the diet, the water, you know, getting some sunlight in the morning, you know, um, focusing on your nutrition, cutting the alcohol is going to help. Oxytocin, known as the love hormone or the bonding hormone, which counteracts stress responses, um, chronic levels of stress also reduce those levels. So getting your stress under control is really crucial. And then finally, the neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin are also influenced by all these hormonal changes and they play a role in mood regulation and it can lead to depression and anxiety. So if you're going through trauma, PTSD, whilst approaching or going through perimenopause, it's crucial to bear in mind that your symptoms are gonna be worse you're going to be feeling worse, you're going to be more emotional, you're going to be more reactive. So make sure you get second opinions. Don't just take the answer you're given by your medical practitioner. Make sure that you are double checking everything and ask them, are you taking into account my challenges posed by perimenopause? Because it might actually be worsening my PTSD symptoms. How are these drugs going to affect my perimenopause? What is that drug do? What's the effect of this? How long am I going to be on this? 
take more steps to advocate for yourself, educate yourself, and don't allow people to manage your health and well-being for you. So if you want to know more about how to balance your hormones, we have a hormones, hormone balancing program for women in perimenopause going through PTSD, trauma responses, that kind of thing. So we really understand this area because we've seen time and time again what people actually go through when they're going through PTSD and trauma responses. Balancing these things is really crucial to having overall and sustainable recovery. If you want to know more, book a clarity call on our website and more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel. Until next time.